This fabulous episode of What's the Apps is brought to you by Audible.com. Sup, sup, it's John Q here from Techno Buffalo, and I'm back in my subterranean studio space, aka my basement, for another episode of What's the Apps. And in the last episode, some of you guys have asked me to check out an Android application called Launcher 7. So without further ado, here is my Launcher 7 review. Review. Re. Um. Ah, but, but, just one second here, sorry to interrupt, but this is the third launchy application that I've checked out for WTA. Nothing wrong with that, plus you guys kind of asked for it, but uh, just no more launchy applications for a while. And um, yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Intro, yeah, intro. And the phone flips over, yes. One of the beautiful things about Android is the ability to customize. And since the beginning of mobile theming about 60 years ago, people have tried to emulate other mobile operating systems. I don't know why, there's just something really free and fulfilling about it. It's like if you're walking down the street and someone just hands you a free donut and you're like hey man you sure they're like yeah man here's a free donut here you're cool so have my donut it's just i can't explain it, it makes you want to whip your hair back and forth with launcher 7 you can emulate the windows phone 7 launcher screen on your android with bright green tiles and everything Launcher 7 basically only has two screens, the launcher screen and the app screen. A tiny part of me was kind of hoping for this thing to Windows Phone 7 eyes the entire phone, but oh well, it's, it's fine. The tiles can be moved around and they have that whooshing launching animation. Swipe the screen to the right and you have your basic app list. Unlike other launcher applications, Launcher 7 is kind of lacking in the features department. The only notable thing you can really do is change the tile colors. Pretty cool, but meh. And adding custom tiles is cumbersome and confusing. You have to tap on on settings, add special tile, and get this, mail tile. How are you supposed to know that? It's like if you wanted to buy a notepad and the only thing you can do was go to the post office to buy it. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't register, you know? So you know what? I'm going to buy that notepad for that inflated post office price and write a letter about how this post office notepad metaphor doesn't make sense to John Q at Techno Buffalo. Maybe throw in some hate words in there. You know why? Because I'm conveniently at the post office. You know, that doesn't really make any sense. That's fine, that's fine. Anywho, so you tap mail tile and under launch application, you tap pick your application, then pick your application. Then swipe to the right, name it something, and choose an icon by tapping stock or bonus bitmaps. Apparently, you can load some of your own from the SD card as well. Then finally, tap create mail tile. You're gonna be prompted, but just tap yes, and, and you're done. You can add widgets, but they usually don't look right. Another downside is that all of the tiles are static, meaning you won't see a notification if you get a new message or missed phone call or something. The only active tile would be mail, but then you gotta tap on that godforsaken stupid add mail tile thing. After that, you have to reset up your email even if you've set up everything already with your phone's default sync settings. You know what? You know, you know what's gonna make me feel a little bit better? To take some time to thank our good friends at Audible.com. Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Choose from over 100,000 titles to be downloaded right onto your iPod or MP3 player to be played back anywhere, anytime. Choose from books in every genre. Science fiction, thrillers, dramas, comedies, business, history, and much more. Recently, I started listening to a lot of radio shows of Louis C.K. on Opie and Anthony, and, and it's great to have on in the background while you work. And you know what? Audible has quite a few of them, and, and they're each like four hours long. So I have a lot of stuff to go through. It's fantastic. Like my face. Just go to audiblepodcast.com slash techno, that's T-E-C-H-N-O, to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, go to audiblepodcast.com slash techno for your free audiobook. Back to Launcher 7. To be fair, the application isn't that terrible. A huge plus side for Launcher 7 is its simplicity and its lightweightedness. I don't even know if that's a word, lightweightedness. But that's okay, so, you know, you don't ever have to worry about it slowing down your phone. Cause it won't. Personally, I'd give it a 3 out of 5. I feel like adding custom tiles should be a lot easier. And I'm not sure if this is possible because I'm not an app developer, but adding live tiles for something like phone calls, messages, tweets, and, and things of that sort would be really, really cool. Value-wise, I'd give it a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, 110% because it's free, you know? So, yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Launcher 7, and uh, I'm going to shake things up a little bit here. If there's an application out there that, that you would love to check out but you haven't yet, for whatever reason, let me know the reason and let me know the application and I'll check it out for you. So, this was John Q from Techno Buffalo. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time. Laters. Oh it just doesn't click. It doesn't make sense, you know? So, I, I go buy my post office. No, I don't buy a post office. I, I, I would if I could.
by that post office. Send myself some mail all the time. 24-7, 365.